If you hear a child crying alone at night, run. If you hear a kid out around the corner woods crying for help, ignore it, especially at night. That was what Uncle Stevie told my brother and I as children, and to anyone new that walked into his local watering hole. His go-to story was when he was 25 and allegedly followed the sound of crying to what looked like a boy huddling on the ground in jeans and a red t-shirt, cradling what appeared to be a broken wrist and arm. When Uncle Stevie stooped down to them, he noticed that the boy's clothes were just colored fine hairs surrounding a mouth that started at his shoulders and ended at the feet. Stevie ran off from this bait, and told the story ever since to anyone and everyone. His story spread like wildfire. I never believed in a thing that mimics a hurt boy to eat people, and I thought the entire thing was made up by my uncle to get a little fame around town. My brother, however, believed Stevie's story like holy doctrine. To settle it, we went out to the woods many times to find this boy, despite our uncle warning us not to. We always found nothing, and argued that the sound of us arguing was chasing it away, so we parted ways to explore our own section of the woods, and agreed to return home by five. By five, my brother had not returned home. I had to lie when questioned nobody could know we were even close to the corner woods, and I feared punishment more than I feared my piquetted brother's well-being. I also figured that the woods we were in was a patch of man-made forest less than an acre big between a few large apartment buildings and a supermarket. Even if my brother was hurt, I figured someone would come along and find him. But my brother did not return. When the police questioned me, I said I didn't know anything. They didn't press a seven-year-old. They found my brother the next morning. He had fallen and gap in the earth and wedged himself in, leaving only his head and a bit of a hand exposed. He broke his arm in the process, leaving him defenseless against the crows that had picked most of his skull clean. I learned later that at least 20 people had heard a boy crying for help that night. One even remembered my brother saying that his arm was broken. All of them said they avoided the cries because of my Uncle Stevie's story.